Now I'm going to use my uh, grapes and I'm going to ink the back of the stamp. I'm going to use the number 86. And I'm going to ink this and just hang these in my arbor. And again with this stamp, I don't have to ink the whole thing. I can just ink part of it. If I wanted to show just a few little grapes hanging back in here, I can. Some back in here, some up in here, and again, I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to pinch it off to a really fine point and just carefully dab at these. I want to keep the defined shape of the grapes, so I'm just going to soften this up a little bit. By the time you're finished with this, you can't even tell that it was stamped. It looks like a little watercolor masterpiece that you've created. Nobody would ever know this was stamped. I'd be so impressed that you're such an artist. Okay, got my grapes in there. That looks pretty good. Now I can add some more vines using these little shoots and this is these both come on one block like this so we can use the left side on the left side and the right side on the right side so I can just ink one at a time I think I'll start with this side and I'm gonna use my number 14 just ink that and just stamp it right outside here like this clean that off and to clean these by the way you just use a damp cloth with water clean off really easy or your thumb like I just did let's add a little bit more there on that one I'm ready to add my water and just soften these up barely just barely dab at them I'm gonna take my uh, masking fluid off and the way to do that now is to just just rub it off with your finger this comes off really easily Okay, now you can see all the white areas that have been left here. Now we're going to brush the, the uh, flowers in. And this is really fun and easy to do. Now I'm using my number 20. This is a magenta pen. And I'm just going to color it on my palette. And I'm going to dip my brush in water and just take a little bit of color. And I'm just going to add a little circle of pink in all of these areas. Just carefully add a little circle of pink of pink. You know another way to do this, if you if you want to leave these white, you can just take your marker, the fine point of your marker, maybe the yellow, and just do a little yellow center and you can leave these areas white, which is really cute too. But in this case we're going to do a pink, pink rose. So wherever you see these round circles, wherever you left these round circles, draw in the pink. We're going to have bigger areas, you know, towards the front that are a little closer, and then smaller areas towards the top. So you want to just keep your keep that in mind as you're doing these. Okay. Now I'm going to dip into my color, and I'm going to take a little bit more color, a little darker now, and I'm just going to make a quick and easy brush stroke underneath. Don't worry about doing all of these exactly the same. No flowers look the same, and especially from far away like this. We're just giving the impression of the flowers. So I'm just doing a little bit of a dark petal underneath. Just keep going in with the darker color. You can see how this is coming together. Okay, now when I've got that finished, I'm going to take my number 20 marker again, the fine point, and I'm just going to color in a little center in these. Just dab in a center, a little darker color. Okay. 
It's looking good. Now I want to add some um, color to this arbor. I'm going to do that with my number 86, my blue. This is the same blue that we used on the sky and the water. I'm just going to take a little bit of this color and just follow the inside of this arbor and just add a shadow in here. Back in here. Would be darker. Now we're going to add some uh, grass back in this background back here. And I'm going to use my tiny little grass, which I think I use in every single project. But this grass is so versatile, and it works so great in the foreground as it does in the background. I think that's why I use it so much, because it's such a good finisher for these projects. So I'm going to stamp this grass in the background, just like this, maybe a little bit along the water line. And then I'm going to dip my brush again, and I'm just going to add some water. Don't be afraid to go outside of the lines. Okay, now I can add some grass in the foreground and I'm going to add my bigger grass. This is the jumbo watercolor grass. And again, I'm going to use my number 15 and stamp this in the foreground. Brush and water. This is all the same technique. Once you can do one of these projects, you can do a, you can do dozens and dozens because they're all done the same way. It's just stamping and adding water. So simple. Okay, I got my grass in there. I think I'll add a little bit darker color. This is the 15 a little darker and maybe some of this blue. This is the number 86 blue mixed in here. It's for a little shadow. Okay, now I want to add some wildflowers in here, a little more color. This is our little wildflower stamp. And I want to protect this. I want to stamp some flowers back behind here. So I want to protect this post. So I'm just, I cut a little mask using a sticky note. And I'm just going to cover that post up. And I'm going to ink this with, uh, this is a number 8 violet. I'm just going to ink the back of this. And stamp this, these wildflowers in here. And you can see that's protected my post so that I don't have uh, the flowers on the top. And now maybe this one I will stamp over the top. Like here. And maybe just a few more over here. Like so. I just take my brush and barely dab at these. Just a little bit of a finishing touch here. Add a little more shadow on there. If you want to go back and add more foliage, you can. Add more flowers in the background if you'd like to. Be sure when you're finished with this that you always sign your work. This is your own work that you've done and need your signature. And there you have it, your watercolor arbor. To order Art Impressions rubber stamps, instructional booklets, and watercolor accessories, visit our website, artimpressions.com, shop our store. AI stamps are available mounted on wood or unmounted on cling cushion for use with acrylic mounts.